Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be talking about soldering, specifically cordless soldering. Which one's better and how far it's come. So without further ado, welcome to the Renaissance Builder. Okay, so soldering. Um, why am I doing this video? Well, I'm doing this video because I have this gadget here. This is a kit. This is a signal generator kit that we're going to be using for, get this, <laughs> overclocking. Anyhow, this is a signal generator kit that I can generate a sine wave, uh, which turns out is stands for sine, is short for sinusoidal wave. Ah, there's a trivia for you a square wave and a triangle wave. So I can generate three different waves. I can generate them at different frequencies. So the idea being, I want to use the signal that this generates. I may have to amplify that signal, but I want to use the signal this generates to overclock our transformer in another video. But I was like, you know what? This channel is all about building things, right? That's what we do. And this thing cost me like 17 bucks on Amazon versus a signal generator that's already assembled is like 50 to 80 bucks. And so it saved me money anyhow. So I'm like, I'm good with that. Oh, and I figured I'd take the opportunity. I saw this thing a while back. Uh, you guys know that I'm a fan of Milwaukee, right? Um, it's kind of hard to not notice that. But I noticed a while back that Milwaukee <laughs> decided to make a battery powered soldering iron. And I was like, what? Okay. Interesting. It caught my interest for sure. Now, to be fair, uh, I have had a cordless soldering iron for quite a long time. This is a snap on, <laughs> which means I paid way too much for it. A butane powered soldering iron. And the idea with this soldering iron is it, it's essentially a lighter, but it blows a little flame up inside here that does all the heating of the tips and stuff. And I thought, you know what? What better opportunity to see which one's actually better uh, at the whole cordless soldering, you know, than, than to build this kit, you know, and do the soldering. So right off the get-go, I can tell you the the kit itself between the two soldering irons. And I guess, you know what, just so I can get this out of my way, I've had a few different soldering irons in my day. This soldering iron is a good old 30 water from Radio Shack. Yes, I still have stuff from Radio Shack because I miss Radio Shack. It was a great store. Even back when it was called Tandy. <laughs> That's going back a ways. No, I'm not that old. Anyhow, um, this is a 30 water. I've used this a lot in the past. You can tell it's, it's a bit heated up. Um, I've made custom tips for the thing, you know, just ground them down and tend them myself. Um, it's, it's, it's done its job, but at 30 Watts, it's barely a good electronics soldering iron. Uh, mostly because that kind of low heat, uh, the problem with low wattage heat is that you have to hold it on the parts longer, which causes heat soak into the integrated circuits, and that's not good. So, I haven't used this one in a very long time, uh, for, you know, just because of that. But I'm going to put it back in my things I like to hold on to because I'm a pack rat category. This other one here is my 100 watt uh, inductive soldering iron. This one, again, I've used it a lot. I've made quite a few different tips for it. You just take the tips and you grind them down into different shapes, whatever you want. This one actually works really well. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, in the past, they have a reputation for shorting out and being unreliable, but I've had a few different versions, including an antique version of that. And I say antique as in it's older than 20 years old, but I lost it which sucks, really sucks, because I really liked that one. Um, anyhow, that one is 110 volt soldering iron. Both of those are 110 volt soldering iron. Then I have 
my butane powered soldering iron, which I'll be honest with you, I've never actually soldered with this soldering iron. Um, soldered as in the proper definition of soldering. I've used it as a blowtorch, believe it or not, um, mostly for Raychem connectors. And Raychem connectors, if you don't know what those are, you can look them up. They're beautiful little gadgets. It's like it's like a crimp connector on steroids. You you stick the thing together, and there's like a little blurb of solder. So you, you do your, your wire prep the same as you usually would. But you stick the wire together inside the connector, and it's clear because there's a little solder blurb inside the connector right in the middle and then it's made a heat shrink so you would take a, a heat gun or in this case a blow a little mini blowtorch and you would heat that up until the solder got hot enough to melt at which point the solder would melt and the flux was already there and everything and it would <laughs> solder the joint and then heat shrink it all at the same time so Raychem connectors I, that's what I use this mostly for um, and heat shrink every now and again. Raychem connectors are a beautiful thing. So this will be the first time I actually solder with this. So that'll be somewhat interesting. So let's talk about the two irons that we got going on here. First and foremost, the snap-on one is obviously gonna be a lot more expensive. I don't know what it costs these days. I didn't bother looking it up. I know I paid a couple hundred bucks for it a long time ago, but it has the advantage of coming with a kit. And that kit gives you, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different tips. A little sponge and water thing uh, for your cleaning your tip and a cap. And it's all in a nice little holder. Uh, like I said, this is old and it's been used, so it's, it's held up very well. It's kind of dirty, but it's held up very well to the abuse I've put it through. Uh, the, the iron itself has a, a stand built into it, which just folds up when you're actually using it. And like I said, it's, it's pretty solid material. It's not overbuilt. There are some plastic pieces that you want to be, you know, at least careful with. Not that you have to be delicate with it, but you know, if you cross thread this here plastic piece on there, then it's, it's going to screw up the thread. So don't cross thread it. You know what I mean? It's, but anyhow, it's a self ignited. Uh, so that turns on the gas and then you would just click this until it lights. Yep, there it's lit. You can actually see the little glow in the in the exhaust port right there. So that that is how that works. And the cap has a little safety thing that pushes on that to make sure that the, the gas valve is not on. Uh, there's a little indicator in the back that you can see your fuel level. And it uses butane, uh, standard a lighter refills, so like butane lighters. Um, it uses a standard refill to accomplish that. And I haven't had any problems with that. And then on top of that, it actually has a little adjustment here that you can turn it lower or higher, you know, just like every other butane lighter out there. Um, that, believe it or not, is probably the handiest function on this thing or the, the the biggest piece that sets it apart versus the battery powered units uh, because the battery powered units do not have a uh, adjustable temperature they just are on and that's it so so that's actually pretty nice like if you're soldering on on small things that don't need a lot of heat, you're using tiny wire, uh, then you can turn it down so you don't overheat the project. Or if you just want to really crank the balls out of it, you know, and, and get her done, then you can do that too. I think it kind of goes without saying though, that it doesn't actually tell you the temperature. So if you're like one of these professional guys that knows how to solder, then you'll appreciate that if you're using this, you'll appreciate that, but you'll find it a bit lacking because it's not like you can just turn a knob and set the temperature exactly where you want it and then it'll always be there. You kind of got to play with it and get a feel for it. So that's the snap-on version. Butane, powered, soldering iron. The downside to this, it is possible to overheat pretty quickly. You got to learn, you got to figure out what temperature you want it at first. 
But the biggest downside I'd say to this is you gotta watch that exhaust port. Cause that thing will burn you quick. Cause it's, it's straight up, that's where the exhaust for the torch is coming out of. And if you're not watching what you're doing, like I specifically set this exhaust port up. Cause usually when you're working on your stuff, you know, you don't want it pointed down because your stuff is underneath of you. So when you're working on your stuff, pointed up is going to keep it. But at the same time, you don't want to point it in your face. So that is probably the biggest downfall to the butane soldering iron is you have to watch that exhaust port because that'll burn you. Battery powered. The battery powered soldering iron. The very first thing I can tell you that is is incredibly annoying and is probably the biggest reason why it's not that handy for electronics. If you are, let's say you have a bunch of Milwaukee tools to begin with and you're working in a shop where you need to solder wires, like you're just doing generalized wire soldering and you know, you solder it and then you heat shrink it. Um, then this could work for you. It does come with a second tip, a wide tip, uh, to be more of a broad uh, solder brush. But the biggest thing that you notice right off the get-go is it's a big clunker. Like this thing is honestly kind of awkward. Now they give you the ability to turn the head. So, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a little bit of control there. Um, that you can put the, the majority of the mass behind your center of gravity. So it does give you a little bit there, but honestly, it's just a big chonker. Like this thing is, is huge, especially compared to the butane or even compared to, well, shoot, if we took a Weller soldering station, you're going to pick up the Weller soldering station and pick this thing up and go, what the am I going to do with this? So... The size is a big downfall to this thing. That's, that's a big downfall. Uh, the other downfall is the fact that there's no temperature selection on it. So it's either on or it's off. And it'll give you a little light when it says it's, you know, warmed up. And then, it, you know, obviously when it's still hot, it'll tell you, there'll be red lights and stuff that'll tell you that it's hot. So that's nice, I guess, but... There's no actual temperature selection. It does tell you your battery condition, that it does tell you. So that's a plus. The advantage to this soldering iron is if you already have Milwaukee stuff and you find yourself in need of a cordless soldering iron because you don't feel like dragging an extension cord around, um, then, well, there you go. That's, that's your solution. If you already have Milwaukee stuff, then and you need a soldering iron, then poof, there you go, soldering iron. I would, I would argue that the price doesn't warrant it. The price is a bit steep. At $90, it's a kind of hard, it's kind of hard to swallow that pill. Now it is a 90 watt soldering iron. So my old uh, Radio Shack soldering iron is only a 30 watt. So this should be more powerful and it should be able to do a better job, but uh, there may be a difference. There shouldn't be a difference in the amount of, uh, in the fact that that's AC versus DC, but um, that, that, I mean, that's, this is what it is. So we're at least going to try it out and see, you know, how well it works. So there it is. That's the two soldering irons. So at this point, I need to delve into our kit and I need to probably read the directions because I don't want to mess it up and pieces need to go in very specific places. Uh, but I guess what I'll do is I'll just do a zoom in and then start the soldering process. And probably what I'll do is, actually what I can do is I can do half of each component with one iron and the other half of those components with the other iron. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Um, oh, where, where where am I thinking? Uh, this is what I get for being an unscripted show. 
The difference, one of the differences between the two is refilling, and that's where the battery has a slight advantage. And I say slight advantage because the butane powered one is not a disadvantage. In order to refill the butane powered, you literally flip it upside down and plug it in, wait till you see the liquid in there, and you're done. Now that takes a couple minutes. So the battery powered one, you're literally, if you have a second battery, then you're literally just popping in a new battery and moving on. Uh, if you don't have a second battery, then you're waiting, you know, a period of time for it to charge. So that's a thing. Anyhow, uh, I'm gonna get started on building this project and I guess we'll get, we'll come back to it after I'm done building this project and review how these two soldering irons performed against each other. So let's get started. So amateur hour soldering is done. Oh, it's honestly been a while and I've, you know, I'm not a professional. So some of these joints look a bit on the rough side. I'll be honest with you. Like a professional is going to look at that and be like, what the hell were you doing, kid? Um, already washed off all the flux and everything from this. So as far as whether my joints are good and whether I burned out uh, the pieces, I'm gonna have to hook up the oscilloscope or the, uh, I'm gonna have to hook up the scope and power this thing up and see where it goes. I need 12 volt power, a consistent 12 volt power to this, and then I can get a signal out of it. So I'll have to hook that up. So we'll find out whether, you know, I'm even worth a bloody at all later on uh so i'll make a video on that because well frankly I'd, i just don't want the video to take too god awful long um this what we're talking about today the soldering irons between the snap-on butane powered soldering iron and the milwaukee battery powered soldering iron for one my milwaukee is half battery uh so couple hours worth of soldering well a couple hours it wasn't a couple hours actually uh, this the battery is supposed to last over an hour uh, soldering so that's okay but still it went down half where's my butane I still got plenty of butane it's almost a full tank yet uh, so the butane lasts a lot longer and it's, it's easy to refill so I kind of honestly got to go, if, if, I'm, if I'm picking between the battery and the butane, I'm going to pick the butane, honestly. Um, by the time I got to, by the time I got used to it, the butane soldering iron just was easier. It was easier to get uh, the hang of. It was easier to start manipulating the tiny pieces. It really just was a lot easier to use 
the tiny, the butane one than the electric one. And I'll be honest with you, even though it's electric and you think, eh, it's a battery powered, when I'm holding my fingers over here, they were getting hot. Even behind the little wannabe shield they got going on here, my fingers were getting hot. <laughs> and again, there's an exhaust port on this, which you have to be mindful of, but I didn't find it was hurting me much. Uh, yes, if I got in the right position, you could feel it heating my fingers up, but you have to be mindful of it, but I find the Snap-on one easier to use, to be honest with you. So I'm going to say if you guys are out there and looking for a cordless soldering iron, I'd go with the butane over the electric, just being honest with you. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go with the Snap-on one, it's that's your call uh snap-on's obviously going to be more expensive by the way i had this thing turned all the way on low uh i turned the temperature all the way down to low to do by the time i got uh comfortable with the soldering like i could have went i could have done this all over again and probably end up with a better product in the end uh, by the time i was done but yeah so that's it that is uh I'm going to let this dry. I washed, I washed off the flux of this board. I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to find a power supply for it. And then we're going to start testing it out with the oscilloscope. As soon as we get this set up to start testing it so that it's producing a decent signal, assuming it works, then we're going to start working on overclocking the transformers. Um, yeah. So that's the video today, guys. <laughs> yeah. So if you're looking, again, if you're looking for a cordless soldering iron i recommend butane i do not recommend the battery ones uh butane's gonna be it's just gonna work better for you um yeah so there you go hopefully you guys enjoyed this video maybe you even learned something you know what it, it was fun to make uh i i enjoyed it and hopefully this all works out uh thank you very much guys for watching i really appreciate it Throw a thumbs up on the video, please. It really, really helps out. Just, you know, get that in there. Thumbs up. It helps the videos out. Um, it helps out more than you know, more than you realize. It really does. Again, if uh, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell icon for future videos. Like I said, we're going to be testing this out with the oscilloscope and trying to overclock some stuff with this in the future. So videos coming up that you guys probably going to want to keep your eye on. So thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. You have a good night. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Yo, I know what he did. He used several different, like, cut scenes out of the same recording and, you know, to make two different videos. Well, you, you best darn tootin' I did because, you know, that's how we get productivity done. Ha! <laughs>